the idea of turning Yakuba Sawadogo's life story into a film was uh, pure luck. It was a pure chance meeting. Um, at the time, uh, I was working for the BBC as a, as a cameraman, and I went out to uh, my friend who was living in Burkina Faso. I had a friend who was living out there, not with the idea of filming anything, but um, it was just, um, just to see what he was getting up to, what he was doing out there. And he said, we should, we should meet this uh, farmer, this interesting farmer who lives down the road. So we, we went off there and we, we set out to uh, meet Yakuba Sawadogo. Yakuba showed me around his forest that he'd planted and he showed me all the crops and all the, all the regeneration he'd done. And I was absolutely amazed. I mean, the, the ground was, was like this. It was this rock hard. And yet there, were, there was this beautiful kind of oasis in amongst it all. And I thought, this is pretty special. So I sat down and decided to do an informal interview. And I got some information out of him. And we, we, he was speaking Moray. So that had to be translated into French and then from French into English. So it's quite a tortuous process. But at the end of it, I was convinced that there was a story there that had to be told. I didn't really know how I was gonna, how I was gonna tell it. But at that point, I decided that I wanted to make a film about his life story. And that's when the title came to me, actually, The Man Who Stopped the Desert, came to me at, right at the end of that first interview. I think one of the most important uh, aspects, uh, impacts, is the, his notoriety, Yakuba's notoriety, because the film has gone all over the world. Um, that's, his profile has been raised. And there's an urban expansion scheme in the nearby city, which we, we allude to in the film. And because of his notoriety, the land that he's got is more secure. Um, his forest is secure. And, and I think on a personal level for, for Yakuba, he, uh, we, we screened the film in, in the local cinema. And uh, it was great to see at the end of it, uh, he was mobbed by all these uh, children and, and young people came up to him and it was like look, looking at a, like a Hollywood star, you know. <laughs> so his notoriety and his, his, his self-esteem has, has really has done a lot for him, I think. I think, yes, other farmers have been reached and inspired. After the film was, was released, a, a series of workshops were set up, headed up by Yakuba. He was running location masterclasses some of the most innovative young farmers were identified and selected and taken to Yakuba's fields and its surrounding areas and taught his techniques. And these have been ongoing now for the past uh, two or three years. And actually, before that, he was going to up to the farmers themselves and uh, identifying villages in and around that area to spread his techniques. The, re the reception of, of the film was more than I I couldn't even imagine. I mean, when I first made this, this, this is the first film I've produced and made myself. Uh, prior to that, I was uh, just the cameraman, so this is the first film I've, I've produced. And I didn't really know what to expect, to be quite honest. But I was absolutely blown away, especially when um, it was screened at the United Nations headquarters. And then from there it was picked up on by lots and lots of uh, international institutions and by governments and film festivals and obviously it's been broadcast in, in, I've lost count of how many countries it's, it's been broadcast on. So uh, it's been received very, very well. It's won lots of awards, which is always nice. And uh, the nicest thing for me was when we screened the film, that we went back to Burkina Faso, and before it was released anywhere else, we went back to the village and we, we screened it on, on the side of a school. We put a, a sheet up and I brought a projector over from, from England and screened the film. And for me, that was that was the uh, that was the key moment. Mm -hmm. Seeing the reactions of the villagers and and Yakuba's face at the end was was, was great. Yeah. Ethiopia Rising is a is a is a bigger scale film. It's hard to really to grasp just the extent of the restoration that's happened in this part of the world. When I came here on a recce visit in, uh, earlier on this year in March, I was just amazed by the extent of the restoration. It was like an alien life form almost had come down and transformed the, uh, the hillsides because there wasn't a, didn't seem to be a square mile that hadn't been touched by human activity. We're, we're two thirds there on the funding We've got two major donors. We've got the World Bank putting in a third, 
and we've got uh, Horek who are putting in another third so we're still looking for the final third to complete the film. We have enough to start the uh, process of making the film coming out here and shooting lots of footage um, but we're, we're still after a, a third of the budget. There's, there's a huge difference, obviously, uh, between Burkina Faso and Ethiopia. The, the most obvious thing is the landscape. I have mentioned to Chris Ray when he first came, it took me to, uh, to Ethiopia that I was glad I came here after Burkina Faso because I think I would have been quite downcast if it was the other way around because the landscape is the star of the film. Um, it's uh, you know, it's going to feature heavily in the making of this film. In terms of making a film in Burkina Faso and once again here in Ethiopia, it's been a very pleasurable process. I mean, we've had incredible support and without that support, without those people on the ground, making a film like this, you wouldn't even begin to contemplate doing it. In this film, we do have another Yakuba Savadogo type character. I, for me, it's absolutely vital to have a personal narrative in a film. If you want to uh, get beyond the circle of interest, if you want to speak to people who already know, are familiar with this territory, uh, conservation people, um, environmentalists, if you want to get outside of that and reach the mainstream, you need to have a, a personal story. That was the success of The Man Who Stopped the Desert with the Yakuba Sarodogo. And in this film we have a, a, a similar character in the form of Abba Howie who has been a massive inspiration to his community and he's going to provide the personal narrative and we're going to reconstruct his amazing backstory um, what he went through when he was young, a young man in order to get to where he is now so I'm looking forward to doing that we're going to come back in March to do all the dramatic reconstruction that's going to be uh, tough <laughs> to do that but I'm looking forward to it